There's been another development in the public dispute between the nation's top law officers. A Senate inquiry is examining a decision by the Attorney General, George Brandis, to restrict how his Solicitor General gives advice. Let's go to Parliament House now to get more from our political reporter, Matthew Doran. And Matthew, what's the latest development here? Well, Catherine, uh, just today another submission has been uh, made to this inquiry, this time from the former Solicitor General, Gavin Griffith. Now, Mr Griffith was the Solicitor General for some 14 years under the Hawke, Keating and the beginning of the Howard governments, and he has made his, uh, his opinion of this current situation known in what is quite a strongly worded submission. Now, this all relates to uh, a decision by the Attorney General to change a legal direction, which means that uh, people within the government cannot approach the Solicitor General directly to ask for his his legal advice. It's something that the current Solicitor General Justin Gleeson has uh, has railed against and said was uh, curtailing his power as the Solicitor General. And Gavin Griffith in this submission, as I mentioned, quite a strongly worded submission, says the image of a dog on a lead comes to mind and that for future appointments a council will be found to accept a shackled office at a reduced, but, a, but at a reduced level of competence and performance from council unlikely and unprepared to say no to those who call for partial and partial rather than dispassionate impartial advice. He goes further to say it's not so much paying peanuts and getting monkeys as the salary of the Solicitor General has never been an inducement. However, the result will be the demeaning of the office to the equivalent of attracting monkeys. And going further to say that the Act which establishes the Solicitor General's position, the Law Officers Act, might be better repealed than the office demeaned to this level of deferential engagement. So very strong words there from Gavin Griffith, the former Solicitor General, and his rebuke of this uh, decision by the Attorney General. George Brandis has spent much of this week trying to, uh, to explain why this matter came about. He said that it was merely uh, something put in place, this practice direction merely put in place to ensure that, uh, that the Solicitor General's office wasn't being troubled by uh, matters that were something of, uh, of uh, not befitting his, uh, his uh, expert advice and that it was only uh, merely a formality that the Attorney General's office would have to tick the box and say that a government department or member of the government could seek advice uh, from the Solicitor General. So Matthew, how big an issue is this likely to be for the government? Well, from uh, I guess from the public's perspective, it does seem like a pretty niche argument. However, it does uh, further examine, uh, I guess, some, some breakdown of relationships within the government. There are questions being raised as to whether or not the first law officer of the land, George Brandis, and the second law officer of the land, Justin Gleeson, now have a working relationship, as it does appear that uh, Justin Gleeson uh, is, uh, is very concerned about the uh, curtailing of his officer's powers. It also takes uh, a lot of uh, attention away from the other issues of the day. The government is trying to prosecute uh, a number of policies, including uh, trying to point the finger to uh, Labor as uh, having blocked the issue of same-sex marriage, getting a run in this term of Parliament. Uh, so it does uh, detract from that sort of area. And we know uh, that uh, it is something that the Attorney General has had to devote a lot of time to this week, doing a number of media interviews uh, outlining uh, his position, outlining his relationship relationship with the Solicitor General. So no doubt this uh, very strongly worded submission is only going to add fuel to that ever-increasing fire. Matthew Doran, live from Parliament House. Thank you.